Have you been falling behind on your work and don't know why? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to reveal 10 habits that are destroying your productivity. Hey, it's Allie here with another episode of Triple T where I share some of my best tips and tricks to help you excel at work and reach your highest potential. And in this video, I'm going to share the 10 habits that are killing your productivity. Now more than ever, there's this growing pressure to be everything to everyone in as little time as possible. And because you're dedicated to your work, you overexert yourself to meet these demands. The problem is that this may have caused you to form some unproductive habits in the process, and you might not even know it. Unproductive habits have a nasty way of disguising themselves as strategic tools to help you survive chaotic work environments and reach unrealistic standards. But once you rip off the mask, you'll find that these habits are wasting time and keeping you unnecessarily busy. I know from personal experience that it can be challenging to spot which habits are unproductive. So to make this process as easy as possible for you, I'm going to share the 10 habits that are destroying your productivity. These habits are well known among experts for ruining even top performers productivity and have the scientific backing to boot. Now, many people tend to exhibit several of the habits I'm going to talk about. So to help you figure out which habit to tackle first, I've also ranked these habits from least to most unproductive. So make sure to stay until the very end because I know many of you are going to be shocked by my top three. Now, full disclaimer, even though I relied on my research and practical experience to determine this ranking, it's still my opinion. So if you have a different ranking, that's perfectly fine. You have your experiences too. So make sure to share that experience in the comments below because I'd love to see it. Otherwise, sit back, relax and grab a drink and we'll get started. Habit 10, resisting change. It's normal for people to want to resist whenever there's a new change. Change can be a pain in the ass, and the change is never guaranteed to be better than what you're doing before. But before you start plotting every way you can oppose this change, hear me out, because you could be hurting your productivity. Not only are you wasting time and energy fighting a decision that's outside your control, but you're slowing down your team's progress by not making the necessary changes. On top of that, you could be rejecting something that benefits you later down the road. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying to roll out the red carpet when you hate what's going on. But what I am saying is to pick your battles wisely and be honest with yourself. Are you resisting this change because it's a bad change or because you don't want to do it? If it's the latter, then your time and energy may be better spent on your work than arguing with management. Habit nine, act before planning. It's tempting to dive headfirst into your work the moment you roll into the office, especially if there's something you weren't able to finish the day before but doing so can actually hurt your productivity. Sure, you have a clear direction now because you're continuing your work from the day before, but what do you do once that's done? You have to pause and think about what to do next, which is only going to overwhelm you, kill your workflow and waste time. In one study, researchers examined employees over a 10 day period, and what they found was that employees were more productive when they spent more time planning their day. So the big takeaway from this is that planning matters. Without it, you're throwing away your time and getting less work done. Habit eight, perfectionism. Do you tend to reread emails before sending it? Even if it's a simple one sentence reply, you scrutinize over every word, typing and retyping until it's perfectly polished. I know I have, and the worst part is that it doesn't only happen with emails. It happens when you prepare a presentation for a meeting. It happens when you finalize a report for your boss. It happens for everything you do. And don't get me wrong, there are situations that require thorough attention to detail, but doing it for every little thing does nothing more than waste time and energy. And to make matters worse, that extra effort you put in rarely gets the recognition it deserves. It also doesn't help that people who do this tend to beat themselves up over the tiniest mistakes. And because of this criticism, they have lower self-esteem, they're more stressed out, and they're more likely to develop mental health issues like depression and anxiety, which you've guessed it, is only going to hurt your productivity further. Habit seven, slogging through your work. Everyone goes through an unproductive slog at some point in their career. And when they do, it's miserable, stressful, and downright frustrating. Your work's piling up on you. Deadlines are quickly approaching and you can't seem to get a slick of work done. So what do you do? You keep pegging away, assuming that by some stroke of luck, you're going to overcome this unproductive block. But pushing through your work especially when you're already unproductive, is only going to wear you out. It's going to destroy your concentration and it's going to cause decision fatigue. 
People can only focus on a task for up to 90 minutes before needing to take a break, unless they want to risk lowering their productivity and work quality. And I'll be honest, that's the max you should be working at any given time. Your productivity can drop much earlier than that. In one study, participants were asked to complete a 45 minute task and unbeknown to them, they were assigned to one of six conditions that determine the type of break they got. Of those conditions, Five allowed participants to take a break doing various activities, and the last one, the sixth one, forced participants to work the entire time without a break. And what researchers found was that the group that performed the worst was the one that kept working on the task without taking a break. And this isn't the only study that's found this. There are several studies that have drawn similar conclusions. And that's why I consider slogging through your work one of the most unproductive habits you can have. Habit six, saying yes. No doubt, one of the most uncomfortable things we can do is say no. We don't like letting other people down and we don't wanna put our reputation or future opportunities at risk because we say no. So regardless if we're exhausted up to our neck in work, we say yes to anyone who asks. But by doing this, you're blowing your time and energy on tasks that aren't guaranteed to benefit you. The only thing that's certain about this situation is that you're gonna start falling behind. Your work's gonna pile up on you and because you're so pressed for time, you're gonna turn in subpar work. So even though you mean well when you help others, you're actually hurting your productivity. You're adding more stress into your life and you're raising expectations that you'll always say yes to requests, which only adds more pressure for you to help out when asked. So without realizing it, you enter this downward spiral of unproductivity and it's all because you say yes to every request that comes your way. Habit five, procrastination. Everybody's procrastinated at some point in their lives. It happens even the best of us. Procrastination can help us deal with tasks that make us anxious, bored, or even doubtful of our abilities. But that's actually what makes procrastination so dangerous. By helping you escape these negative feelings, it's rewarding you for avoiding undesirable tasks. Now, some people claim they do better when they procrastinate, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Sure, you might get through your work a lot faster because you're motivated by a deadline, but at what cost? The quality of your work. And there's research to support that. A meta-analysis analyzed dozens of results from 7,447 participants and found that procrastination lowered performance across four different types of performance metrics. What this means is that it doesn't matter what type of task you work on. Your performance is going to decrease when you procrastinate. On top of that, Research has found that procrastination lowers your health and sleep quality, which can also hurt your productivity. Hence why I think this is one of the worst habits you can have. Habit four, excessive meetings. It's no secret that meetings are major productivity killers. They're draining, painful to sit through, and are guaranteed to put everyone in a bad mood. A Harris poll conducted by Clarison surveyed 2,066 employees and found that employees spent on average, 9.1 hours a week preparing and attending meetings. And if you think that's awful, imagine being a senior manager. They're reported to be in meetings for 23 hours a week on average. So if they work 48 weeks per year, that's about 46 days a year spent sitting in meetings alone. It's no wonder CEOs like Mark Cuban and Elon Musk despise meetings. They're huge time wasters. Now to be fair, there's a time and place to hold a meeting, but there's no reason to have meetings excessively especially if the sole purpose is to communicate information. That's what email's for. It also doesn't help that meetings typically don't have a clear purpose or structure and tend to raise more questions than answers. I know it's tempting to schedule a meeting for the sake of convenience, but if it serves no other purpose, then it's hurting yours as well as others' productivity. Habit three, multitasking. Many people rely on multitasking to survive hectic work days. Seems convenient enough, makes our workload appear more manageable, and even helps us get through mind-numbing tasks. That's why there are some people who are hesitant to listen when experts say that multitasking is bad for productivity. So you want the good news or the bad news? Well, the good news is that there are some people who are excellent multitaskers. They can juggle several tasks without any sign of performance deficiency. The bad news? Chances are you're not one of those people. It's estimated that less than 3% of people can perform equally well doing one task or several tasks at once. So what does that mean for the rest of us? It means that every time you switch tasks, it's going to take more time to focus and you're going to make more mistakes. Now, 
The impact these things have on performance might not seem apparent at first, but over time, these things add up. In fact, it's estimated that shifting between tasks can cost people up to 40% of their time at work. That's about three to four hours of your day, depending on how long you work. That's why I think multitasking is one of the most unproductive habits you can have. Habit two, ignoring your needs. In today's hustle and bustle culture, employees are expected to work harder for longer periods of time. And this has only gotten worse after COVID. Researchers from Harvard Business School analyzed the habits of 3 million employees across 16 cities in lockdown. And what they found was that people worked on average 48.5 minutes more a day than they did pre-COVID. If you work 48 weeks a year, that means you're working 194 hours more per year. That's time that could be spent hanging out with friends and family, doing hobbies you enjoy, sleeping, you know, the things you need to maintain a healthy lifestyle. But instead, we ignore these needs and prioritize our work. Not only does this create stress in our personal lives, but that stress can spill over into our work life and hurt our performance. A 2021 survey examined 1,500 U.S. adult workers, and what they found was that three in five workers experienced negative impacts from work-related stress. They had zero interest in their work, they had difficult time focusing, and they were putting in less effort. And if you really want to talk about the ultimate performance killer, then let me put it this way. You can die from prioritizing work over your personal needs. For the year 2016, it was estimated that 745,000 people died from stroke or heart disease as a result of working longer hours. And when we compare these results to the year 2000, that's a 42% increase for heart disease and a 19% increase for stroke. So not only does ignoring your needs hurt your productivity, it creates unnecessary stress in other areas of your life and it puts you at risk of dying. That's why I consider this one of the most unproductive and harmful habits you can have. Habit one, checking messages. This was a tough decision. I mean, what can possibly be worse than a habit that can kill you, right? But after thinking about it, I'd have to say it's checking messages and these are my reasons why. One, because of the sheer number of people who do it. We become a society that craves fast, seamless connection 24 seven. As a result, we're expected to respond to a message the second it arrives. That's why it's not surprising to see that anywhere from 89 to even 99% of people check their inbox every day. As for my second reason, it's one of the biggest time wasters. The average professional checks their email 15 times a day, and it's estimated that this can waste up to 21 minutes a day. That's 84 hours a year spent checking your email if you work 48 weeks a year. And that doesn't include messages you check on your phone. People spend around 56 minutes a day doing non-work-related activities on their phone. That's 224 hours per year. So in total, people are wasting, on average, 308 hours a year from checking messages on their phone or email. That's the most of any habit I've talked about. As for the last reason why checking messages is the most unproductive habit you can have, it promotes other unproductive habits. Take procrastination, for example. When people don't want to do a task, what do they usually do? They reach for their phones or check their inbox for messages. The same goes for multitasking. People often bounce between their work and their messages. So considering all the reasons I listed, the number of people who check their messages, the amount of time wasted, and its associations with other unproductive habits, I consider checking messages to be, hands down, the most unproductive habit you can have. That's all I have for you today. If you made it this far, then don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I've got some great things planned that you won't want to miss. And by clicking, you're letting me know to create more videos like this. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Until we drink again, take it easy. Bye. Maybe we just have some chocolate covered cookies. You know, the good stuff. Not really good. I would dip it, but I have lemon tea today and I feel like that's not going to taste well. Maybe? Let's try it. No, I know there's things like chocolate oranges, but that is not, oh, I'm not a big fan. So, chocolate biscuit it is. We're just going to leave it at this. Take it easy, everyone. Bye.